YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching in this video step-by-step -step process on how to install a double, it's got two, one trash bin and one recycling bin into an actual cabinet and it is a pull-out feature. I think you'll like this. Let's get started. All right, YouTubers in the kitchen now and this is the actual cabinet that we are going to place the trash can. First thing we need to do is open the door and actually measure the opening and we are actually going to take out this drawer here and that's okay so from here all the way down the opening height wise is 20 and a half next measure the width from left to right and ours is 12 inches and or one foot now we will measure the actual depth go all the way back to the back and you can see 22 and three quarters so now what we'll do is head to our local Lowe's or Home Depot. All right, YouTubers, back from our local Home Depot. Here's what we did. We purchased two different options. You can see the difference. One option on the left-hand side, there's the part number and brand, only has one trash bin. On the right-hand side, same brand, different part number, two bins. The difference in bins, this is a 28.75 quart bin, and this is two 25.6 quart bins. As far as the height, very similar. As you can see, the width is a little larger with the double bin option, and the depth of 22 inches is actually deeper than this option here. So what I'll do is I'll pull each of these out and show you the comparison. Here's the difference. As you can see, it's going to cover a lot more distance depth-wise, as you can see. However, the height is basically the same. However, we're going to get a lot more room for garbage or trash as opposed to this option. And the reason we're going with this option, obviously for that purpose, and we have the actual space for it. So why not? We may use one for garbage and one for bottles and cans. Back inside, and again, we are going to lose this storage space, however. That's okay. Carefully remove this. Set that aside. Two Phillips screws, one on the right side, on the left side and once you remove these screws you can actually shift this mounting bracket over and out of its rear mounting brace from here i'll grab some scotch tape and actually run tape over those holes because the bottom have actual cover guards on them or cover inserts and because we're putting a two garbage bin system in here to alleviate possible garbage odors from coming out the back and out into the actual kitchen i'm going to just run scotch tape over those holes tape is inserted and secure from here it's time to open everything up and unbox everything and become familiar with the instruction manual and make sure we have all the parts we will need a phillip head screwdriver a drill, which you will see is optional later on in the project. We have two waste bins. Check. We have the actual sliding base assembly, only one of those. Check. We have two cage locking clips. Check. We have two wire cages. Check. We have one handle. Check. And we have four mounting screws. Check. Screws and clips are unpackaged from here. Step number one, installing the slide base assembly. Place the sliding base assembly, which is C, that is that, on the cabinet floor in the desired position. Position the front mounting strap against the back edge of the cabinet frame. So let's go ahead and install that. An additional helpful tip or option, take a look at the actual pictorial image on the box, and that is the actual plate there. Position this properly, carefully. Pick it up, insert it, try not to scratch any of your cabinet faces, and from here, this is what they're referencing. Position the front mounting strap against the back edge of the cabinet face frame. There's my frame, basically right here. From here, align it properly, and it says to close the door. Make sure your door does not touch that. That's perfect. From here, it wants us to screw in the four mounting screws. Now, real quick, in the event that you do not have this actual framed portion here, you need to measure a half inch to three quarters back from here. Next thing I recommend, center the part. And what I did was did my best to center it and then I shifted it to five eighths on each side, gap in between there. 
and from here I will secure those four screws. However, what I mentioned earlier, you have the option to drill with a 1 16th bit, and there's the optional step here. However, we are not going to do this. We are going to just grab our screws, insert them, and secure them. Making progress, the first screw is secured. Again, the pictorial image reference it. It has you putting them into the oval shaped, and that's so you can adjust this prior to actually securing these screws. From here, I'll secure the remaining three. Making progress, again, your measurements may be different. We have 5 eighths gap in between the front portion and we've got an inch and a half back there. Once you secure these, your rear portion of your mounting rails may shift, so make sure you center them. From here, step two, we are going to actually get these cages and install them. Pay attention to the actual pictorial image here. This is the front, that is the rear. This is how it is going to be positioned, and inside you have internal locks or tabs. Those are it. So let's grab those rails. Cages are in place. I'll do one. Make sure you reference the image. Pull these actual slides out all the way. And we'll do this one first. Take a look at this portion here. It has two little holes. You are going to carefully insert those holes and fit these tabs inside the holes. And I may actually, unfortunately, need to remove this door to do that. Quick update, as you can see, I had to do just that. Remove the door. Four screws, two on each hinge, and the hinges will stay connected to the cabinet. Those two little slots, here's how you have to insert it. At quite an angle, as you can see, so it did encroach on the door. And once it's in, slide it down into place, and do the same for the front cage. Both rear and forward cage are inserted on those clips. Now onto the opposite side, you have two additional clips here. Very important, do not push these down yet. This is a very important step. As you can see here, do not push down. What we need to do is close the unit so that the wire cage is completely inside the cabinet. Now, at that point, you can push down. So just slowly push this back. And from there, I'll need both hands to press the cages into the clips. All right, that was a lot easier than I thought. From here, you can just pull this out and again, Make sure those are flush, as you can see here. And now it's on to step number three. We're going to install the cage locking clips, which are these. Reference the pictorial image, read the directions, and secure them. Check out that little circular cutout there, as well as these cutouts here. This cutout and that cutout are going to go over this. And that circular cutout there is going to secure itself onto the lower bar there, just like that. Front clip is installed, now to the rear clip. Step three complete, step four, installing the bin and handle. Clip the handle onto the front of the wire cage, insert the bin A into the cage. That's this part right here, and it looks like it just goes right here. See those little circular cutouts there? Go ahead and rest that on there. And I definitely needed both hands. This is very firm on there. This is the adjustable handle. As you can see, it goes flush from here. Just reference the image once again. Insert the bins properly with the cutout. I'll pull this out and insert it right into place. Push that in. Grab the second bin. Insert it. Push this all the way in. Now I can access this upper hinge and lower hinge to secure that door. All right, YouTubers. Let's check it out. Door is reinstalled, and here is the handle. We'll pull it up and out. Check that out. And as we close this, we'll just put the handle down, and this is a soft closing hinge. We'll just push it in place, as you can see here, and close the door. Perfect. We love it. All right, YouTubers, it's been a few days and we still really like this option. However, what we've realized, it is a two-step process. Step one, opening the actual door with the hinges. Step two, pulling the actual bins out. And they actually make an option where you can remove both of these hinges and make the door come all the way out. So the actual door itself or cabinet door there connects itself down here with mounting brackets. And what I did was I went to our local Lowe's and I purchased the attachments to allow us to set that up in that manner. Check that out. There's a better look at it. 
So in the event that you want to go that route and make it a one-step process, all we'll have to do is pull from here and all the way out. What I will do is post a link down below in the description section as well as the comment section on the step-by-step -step process on how to install these mounts onto the actual door. So definitely check that out. Again, YouTubers, hope the video helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. I hate once you do that. Every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us. That will be awesome. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you at the next video.